Thank you. Welcome back to Shape for Generous Living. Each week in this series, I've invited one of our pastors to do just about a two-minute video uh, introducing us to just a few of the ministries in their particular areas. And so we've done 101 ministries and 201 and 301 and 401. And that means there was one left, that is 501, the Adore Team, the Worship Team, well, obviously, we don't have a worship pastor right now, and so I thought, well, I'll ask Lyndall to put this one together, and so the 501, and he also heads up the Grace team. Now, I realized when I asked Lyndall to do a video, I was taking a chance. <laughs> so we're going to see how well it turned out. Watch. Sorry. Yeah, this is Lundell Nolan, the executive pastor here at Grace Community Church. And today I'm going to be sharing with you a couple of opportunities, uh, ministry opportunities for the Adore team. Since we don't have a worship pastor and it's just hard to get this into a man bun, I thought I would try to find a creative way to express to you ways that you can be involved in the Adore team. First way is the media ministry team. They do a great job behind the scenes, making videos like this, bringing them to you, and a great way to be involved. If you like working with sound or the website or uh, video, lighting, graphics, any of those creative, artistic ways, great place for you to serve. Also, if you have the gift of music, of song, and you love to sing, and people love to listen to you, then um, there's a place for you in the choir. Uh, the choir is going to be ramping up just right around the corner in August and preparing for singing once a month as well as Christmas. So it's a great way to get involved, kind of an entry-level way into our worship team. Now on another team, the Grace team that I work with, uh, a couple of ways you can get involved. Maybe you just have a little a knack, a green thumb, and you can be involved in helping us create a little slice of paradise here at Grace Community Church. Join the Paradise at Grace landscaping team. It's a great way you can adopt an island or be involved in a variety of ways to just help this place be as beautiful as possible, inviting people to connect with Christ. A final way you can get involved on that team would be through the Global Leadership Summit. You can sign up to come. It's going to be in August 10th and 11th. But if you register before July 11th, you could save some money. That's this Tuesday. So save some money, register to come. And since you're coming, you can also help with hospitality, just to be welcoming to our entire community as they come to learn about leadership and be exposed to the greatest leader of all time, Jesus Christ. If you want to find out more about any of this information, ways that you can be involved, uh, feel free to give me a call through the church office or just catch me out in the lobby. I have a hunch I will not be hard to find. We'll look forward to talking to you later. God bless. Patty, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You can't put a square peg in a 
round hole. You've heard that expression. We've all heard that expression. You cannot put a square peg in a round hole. That is not true, ladies and gentlemen. You can put a square peg in a round hole. You will do great damage to the peg and to the hole. But it can be done with a sledgehammer. My, uh, my kids, when they were young, one of their favorite toys was this plastic box. Some of you have seen this, I know. And, and on the outside, it had holes in it, different shapes, you know, squares and circles and triangles and rectangles. And then it had little individual pieces shaped to match those holes. And the only way you could get the little piece inside the box is you had to keep trying the holes until you found the right one. Now, my children could have gotten a square peg in a round hole if I would have attached a hammer with that toy, but I did not. Because we all know that if you try to force a square peg in a round hole, something is not going to work and something is going to get damaged. The very same is true when it comes to finding how God has shaped you for generous living. And that's the series we're in right now, Shaped for Generous Living. What does it look like to be shaped for generous living? Well, when, when we come to today's message, this is especially true that we understand the importance of finding the right fit. We're, we're looking at shape, the word S-H-A-P-E as an acrostic. And if you really want to find your shape for ministry, you need to find S, your spiritual gift. H is your heart, your passion. A is your natural abilities. And then today is P, personality. Personality. Oh, personality. We all have one, but we don't all have the same one. And guess what happens if we try to serve in a ministry, but that particular ministry doesn't really fit our personality? Bad things happen. For example, imagine what happens here at Grace if we try to put a, a quiet person into a public role. That doesn't work. What happens if we put a natural follower in the position of leadership? Or a person who works best alone, we put them on a team. <laughs> Explosions happen, right? Or what happens if you take someone who has the gift of teaching, but their gift is really teaching adults, and you put them teaching fifth grade boys? Yeah, you remember my story a couple of weeks back, the class from hell is what happened to me. Great harm is done when we try to put a square peg in a round hole. Damage is done to the person, damage is done also to the ministry. When finding our shape for ministry, we must take a good, hard, honest look at the personality type that we have. In thinking of shape, of the five components, S-H-E-P-E, -E, this one, the P, requires, I believe, the most personal honesty. We must be willing to be honest and realistic when we look at our individual personality and just accept the fact, this is who I am. This is my personality type. If we don't, we're going to set ourselves up for personal frustration and a lot of failure along the way. Now, what we're going to do today, we're going to look at a passage in 1 Corinthians 12. Now, I know, I know, I know that the heart of 1 Corinthians 12 is about S, spiritual gifts. But there is one line in one verse that really deals with personality. And if we're not careful, we'll, we'll step over it and we'll miss it. All right? I want to read to you 1 Corinthians 12, verses 4 through 6. And then I'm going to read one verse in the Phillips translation. All right? Here we go. There are different kinds of gifts, 
talking about spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but, now watch, but in all of them and, let's say it together, in every one. Notice that. See, in all of them and in every one, speaking of every one of us, it is the same God at work. All right, now, I want to read just verse 6 in the Phillips translation. I believe the Phillips translation really grabs this well. Phillips says this. This is verse 6. God works through different men in different ways. But it is the same God who achieves his purposes, how? Through what? Some of them? Through most of them? Through the really gifted of them? No, no, no. Through all. See? He works through all people. God can use every single one of us, even though we are wired differently with a unique personality. The reason I want to drive this home is I regularly run into Christians who say, or at least they think, God could never use me because I have a different personality. God could never use me because I am really quiet. God could never use me because I am very, very shy. A God could never use me because I just don't work well with a group of people. I'm kind of a solo, give me a job, I get it. But God could never use me because I can't really work on a team. I'm always telling everybody how to do it. Hmm? And so I, I regularly run into people who disqualify themselves for ministry based upon one thing, their personality. God could never use me in ministry because this is how I'm wired personality-wise, and I know God could never use my personality type. Well, I hope to correct that mistake in our study today. What does it take for us to recognize our personality and then get it plugged into a ministry that fits? All right, you ready to dig in? Step one. Step one, you have to analyze your personality. Analyze your personality. This is where you have to be totally and brutally honest with yourself and say, okay, what kind of personality do I have? For example, let me just give you some ideas here. Am I outgoing or am I more reserved? Do I work best with a team or do I work best by myself? Am I project-oriented or people-oriented? Oh, that's a big one. You know, do you like to get the job done? Or do you like to get with people and talk and laugh and have snacks? And if you have time, you'll get the project done. Yeah, I just caught half of you right there. Uh, do I work best as a leader or a follower? Now, that's important that you understand. Are you... Do, do you really need to be in the lead? Not in an arrogant way, that's just how you're wired. Or do you love to get behind a good, strong leader and say, man, I've got your back? You, get, you need to understand that about your personality. Uh, do I enjoy variety or routine? See, some people like to, they like to do the same thing every week, every week, every week. Others get tired, they get burned out, and they want to do something different. Well, don't beat yourself up if you're one or the other. Simply acknowledge it and, and be aware of it. Now, what do we learn here in your notes? We must honestly look into our personality mirror and ask, who am I? How did God hardwire my personality? You're hardwired. And if you start messing with the way God wired your personality, you're going to mess up your life. You just kind of have to say, yeah, I'm, I'm different in this way. I'm unique in this particular area. One personality type is not right or better. It's just different. Now, let me illustrate. The difference between NASCAR and a tractor. Can you kind of get that in your mind? 
Is, does everybody see a difference? All right, if I want to drive fast on a track, I need a NASCAR, hmm? not a tractor. But if I need to plow a field, I need a tractor. Now, imagine me with, you know, Junior's NASCAR out plowing a field. I'm going to stir up a lot of dust. I'm going to make a lot of noise. I'm not going to plow a field. Do you understand that neither one is good or bad? They're just different. And what we need to do is both are right if they match the task. It's the same way with our personality. By the way, there are some wonderful personality inventory tools that, that really will help you examine and analyze your personality. Now, I'm making you an offer that you cannot refuse, all right? Here it is. Our ministry office, Barry and Nelda, have done a marvelous job putting together some of these resources. If you want to know more about it, just pick up the phone this week or catch them after church, and they will tell you about some of these personality inventories. They're real easy to take. You learn a lot about yourself. In fact, they have made it so easy, even a pastor can do it. You literally can go on our church webpage, or you can go on GraceNet, those of you who use our GraceNet here, and just go to Forms. Click on Forms, and you're going to see personality inventory. And take it this week. You will learn some interesting things about you. They are designed to help you look into that personality mirror and, and kind of, if it's blurry, kind of bring it into focus. But he, I got good news. I got great news. It doesn't matter what personality type you have, God can use you. God can work, as we just saw in our passage, God can work with different people to do different kinds of things. He can work with all kinds of personalities. So, in your notes, write this down. I work hard on this. You are unique. I thought that was good. I mean... But just remember, you are unique. Nobody can do you like you can do you. I cannot do you. I can do me, but I can't do you. So you do you in a unique kind of way and watch what God does. Step one, you got to analyze your personality. All right, you ready for step two? Accept your personality. After analyzing your personality, you may not be totally content with what you find. You may wish you had a different personality. Anybody been there? Oh, I wish I was more outgoing. Oh, I wish I was more task-oriented and I could get stuff done. Oh, I wish, I wish, I wish. A big challenge, once you analyze, is to accept it. It takes a huge step of faith. But here's my challenge to you. If you struggle with your personality and you always wanted to be something you're not or someone you're not, take that step of faith and say, God, I know when you made me, you did not make a mistake. And I know, God, you hardwired me in my personality for a reason. I'm going to trust your wisdom and accept my personality. That's going to be a big step for some of you because all of your life you have struggled with accepting who you are with your personality. So, just remember this little proverb. I put it in your notes. Less visible does not mean less valuable. Less visible doesn't mean less valuable. For example, um, right now, there are two things working all across this auditorium. Livers and hearts. Your liver is working right now, right? Cleaning, cleansing your blood. Your heart is working right now. 
If it isn't, you're in trouble. But neither one of those are visible. Isn't that amazing? We, we think, boy, you, to really be valuable, you have to be visible. No, very often, it's the parts working underneath the surface, behind the scenes, that really make an organization or a business or a family or a church function well. It, it scares me to death to imagine what would happen at Grace Community Church if this week everybody who works behind the scenes stopped working behind the scenes? Do you realize this morning if people who work behind the scenes did not show up and do their behind the scenes work today, you would all be sitting out in the parking lot because somebody got here early, early and opened up all the doors so we could get in. Who was that? You don't know, do you? Me neither. <laughs> but I sure am glad that they were here. Yeah. Who turned on the air conditioners this morning? Aren't you glad? I could go on. Listen, less visible does not mean less valuable. I want you to think for a moment. Just, just span Scripture in your mind Think of all the different personality types we see in the Bible. All the biblical characters. Did they all have the same personality type? Absolutely not. Did God use them anyway? Absolutely. He didn't use them in spite of their personality. He used them because of their personality. Rick Warren has a great quote in The Purpose Driven Life. Let me share it with you about variety. It is obvious that God loves variety. Just look around. He created each of us with a unique combination of personality traits. God made introverts and extroverts. He made people who love routine and who love variety. He made some people thinkers and some people feelers. Some people work best when given an individual assignment, while others work better with a team. The Bible says, quote, God works through different people in different ways, but it is the same God who achieves his purpose through them all. He goes on. The Bible gives us plenty of proof that God uses all types of personalities. For example, Peter was a sanguine. Paul was a cleric. Jeremiah was a melancholy. When you look at the personality differences in the 12 apostles, it's easy to see why they sometimes had interpersonal conflict. Listen to his last comments. There is not a right or wrong temperament in ministry. We need all kinds of personalities to balance the church. Hear that word? To balance the church and... To give it flavor. The world would be a very boring place if we were all plain vanilla. Fortunately, people come in more than 31 flavors. That is a great quote. God, you see, in the Bible was able to use all different kinds of personality types. Why? Because they were willing to accept their personality and then Offer it to God and say, God, use me the way you wired me. Use my personality. Look at Psalm 139, verse 13 and 14. David understood this. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful I know that full well. David was able to say, God, you wired me, and I'm going to accept it, and it's a wonderful thing. How many of you who are married kind of look at your marriage and you, you, you say the old thing, opposites attract? Are there any couples here that you would say, yeah, uh, in our marriage, opposites attract? Let's, quick show of hands. How many marriages opposites? Opposites. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, give him the, yeah, now he's raising his hand. Yeah, there you go. My wife and I, 
talk about opposites attract. I just wrote down a few with Mary and I. I love structure. My wife loves spontaneity. For example, the idea, you know, driving down the street, she's, oh, let's just drop in on so-and-so. I go, I can't do that. It's not on my calendar. <laughs> Personality. Um, I love routine. My wife likes variety. If it was up to me, we'd have the same furniture that when we got married and when we die. Same furniture, same color of paint in the house. I like two colors of paint, white and off-white. <laughs> well, Mary, she needs variety, so ever so often, it, the house gets painted. I, big difference between Mary and I. I am much more reserved and personality-wise. She is very, very outgoing. When we go to a party, I've told you some of you this story, but when we go to a party or a reception, when I, when I go in, let's say there's 200 people. I go in... I, I look for the food table, and I'm a purpose-driven eater, and I look for the food table, I go over, I get a cookie, and a napkin, and a punch, and I look for chairs, and I go sit in the ferns, you know, and drink my punch. That's me. My wife goes by the food table, which is beyond me. She will pass the food table and meet every person. And she will talk to 200 people. It's amazing. She will meet every one of them. I'll meet maybe two or three. Usually fern people join me. <laughs> and and we, we sip together. And we, four or five of us, we get to know each other real well. Now, this was important for me to learn in my marriage. Early on, guys, I didn't know this difference. So we would be at this party and Mary had met everybody and it's two hours later, and I said, hey, you ready to go? She said, yeah, I'm ready to go. I thought that ready to go meant ready to go. <laughs> so I would go. I would go, and I'd get in the car, and I would wait and wait, and, and I'd start the air conditioner, and I would wait. I'd turn the radio on. I would wait, and about 10, 15 minutes later, she would show up. And I, I would say, I thought you said we were ready to go. She said, I was. What I didn't know is that before Mary leaves, she's got to go say goodbye to 200 people. It's called the farewell tour. She does the farewell tour, and then, man, that has helped me so much. So now when I start to the car, I walk slow. And then I expect a 15-minute wait. So just a difference with us. Um, one more on this. I am obsessively organized. And Mary is, shall we say, less <laughs> organized. For example, you go in at my house, my sock drawer is obsessively organized. Black socks next to the black are gray. And then brown, all shades. Hey, I'm a little... All shades of brown. I'm not picky there. And then blue. You never put blue next to black because you'll get them mixed up, right? Obsessively people, you know what I'm talking about. That is my sock drawer. We have been married 38 years. I don't know if Mary has a sock drawer. <laughs> if she does, I've never seen it. It may be buried under... She's less organized than I am. So... But it's a wonderful thing in marriage when you can not only accept your personality, but your spouse's as well. Okay? Step three. Step three, align your personality. Once you analyze it and accept your God-given personality, then you need to align it with the right ministry. Now, very important in your notes there are no wrong people in ministry, okay? There are no wrong people in ministry, just right people in the wrong ministry. Effective ministry happens when we align our personality with the ministry that what? Fits us. So we put a round peg in a round hole, you know, a square peg in a square hole. We line them up. I'll, one personal example here. I learned something about my personality years ago. I learned that I, I don't do well serving on boards and on committees. Some people are great, 
I mean, you know, they will, they will run for office. They will, they will voluntarily be a committee member. That's beyond my comprehension. I learned I am not wired to do committees. I'm very honored. I regularly are, am asked to serve on, you know, community boards or committees. And I always, you know, express my appreciation, but I always decline. Here's why. I am not wired that way. I don't do well on committees. I don't like them, and eventually they don't like me. Uh, I, the people who do this, it's amazing. They're able to sit for hours and listen to people talk and talk and talk and talk. And I'm over there just going, I, get me out of here. Is there something wrong with committees? Oh, man, we need committees. We need boards to run organizations. You just don't want me on there. Why? That is not my personality type. I'm not wired for that. And I, I learned this lesson, and may I pass it on to you in your notes. Don't serve in areas where your personality doesn't fit. You'll be miserable, and so will everyone else. Instead, be like the wise woodworker who knows it's much easier to work with the grain instead of against it. Find a ministry that matches your personality type. Now, guys, it may take some experimenting. You know, I shared a couple weeks ago, I had to tr trial and error. I had to test drive some ministries before I found where I fit. So, step three, really learn to align that personality. I love the analogy that the church is to function like a stained glass window. Uh, anybody ever been to the Institute Chapel? Seen the beautiful stained glass window in there? You know, when you walk in, it takes your breath away. It's just, wow, especially on a beautiful sunny day. But have you ever walked up onto the platform and got nose to nose with the stained glass? You will realize when you get right up close to it, it's rather boring. It's rather mundane, to tell you the truth. It's chunks of glass just plugged in and another one here and another one here. When you get up real close, you don't, you don't get the effect. It looks very monotonous. Only when you step back and you let sunlight flood through all the different shapes, all the different colors, that you see the majesty I want Grace Community Church to be like a stained glass window. I don't want all of us to be red glass or blue glass or green glass. No, I don't want all of us to be round or square or triangle. No, we are individually and uniquely shaped and colored by God. God shines His light through Grace Community and it's beautiful to the world, not because we're all the same shape, size, and color. No, it's beautiful to the world because we're all uniquely different and yet beautifully fitted together by the Holy Spirit. So, as we move forward, my challenge to you is this. Let God shine through your personality and your personality, and yours, and yours, and yours, and yours, and yours. And when we allow God to shine His light through each of our unique personalities, we then will reflect the multicolored glory of our God. Take time to analyze your personality. Trust God enough to accept the way He wired you. And then align your personality in a ministry that really is a good fit for you. And when we do this together, we will take an enormous step forward as the church of the living God, allowing God to use our shape to be generous people in our community. Let's bow. Father, thank you that you want us to discover how you have uniquely shaped us for generous living. Father, my prayer is that each and every one of us in this room 
would take some time if we need to this week to analyze and to accept and align the unique personality that you have hardwired into our DNA. Forgive us when we've tried to change our personality. Forgive us when we've been jealous and envious of other people's personalities. Help us, Lord, to know that we're fearfully and wonderfully made by your wonderful, wise hand. Use us, Lord, as a stained glass. Shine through us your beautiful, multicolored glory to the world around. This is our prayer through Christ. Amen.